Radio 1 FM 90. Brought to you by Housing Finance Bank, a financial institution regulated by Bank of Uganda. Housing Finance Bank, we make it easy. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. A very good evening to you and thank you very much for joining us for this edition of Spectrum. We are live on Radio 1 FM 90. We will be discussing the importance of museums for our heritage and the tourism sector. Now, world over, museums are very important for promoting national heritage, but preserving history, but also promoting tourism uh, that brings in foreign exchange. Now, given this importance, the government through the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and, and Antiquities with other stakeholders are taking the lead in promoting and setting up of new museums and preserving those that are already in existence. Now, one of the things that is going to happen is the commemoration of the International Museum Day. The theme this year will be um, museums shaping knowledge for the future. Now that is derived from the International Council of Museums. There's also an international theme uh, which uh, will be museums for education and research. Now the commemoration of this day is going to take place in Soroti City uh, on Saturday this week. Now this evening I have a team in the studio to discuss the state of museums in Uganda, the importance to our heritage, education, research, not forgetting uh, the tourism sector. Let me introduce my guests. Mr. Vivian Liazi, the Acting Commissioner, Tourism Development, Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Ticketies. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us this evening. So glad to be with you today. You. In studio, Ms. Barbara Babuitera Mutambi. She's the Executive Director, Cross Cultural Foundation of Uganda. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you very much, Kenneth, and good evening to you or our listeners. And uh, Ms. Jacqueline Nyirachiza. BCJ, the Acting Commissioner Museums and Monuments uh, in the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for receiving us. Good evening our viewers. All right. Well, um, I'll begin with you uh, Jacqueline. Uh, we will be commemorating the mm. International Museums Day. Uh, let's first try to understand museum in the context of Uganda. Um, why are they important? Um, and what are we doing actually to set up, preserve those that, that are available mm. and linking them up with uh, the tourism sector, uh, which is considered as one of the key sectors in driving this economy? Thank you very much, Kenneth. Uh, once again, good evening, listeners. Mm. Yes, museums in Uganda. Uh, Kenneth, you are aware that museums play a role in I would say in culture, heritage, preservation, in education, mm -hmm. and in securing, I would say, uh, having the context, having the, the, the country, understanding the country's past. Museums showcase the, the country's heritage. It is within the museums that we see the country's heritage. What does the country have? from say 1 million, 20 million years to present. And so to any learner, to any, uh, I, not only learners, to any tourist, to any Ugandan who would want to understand what this country was before, today and where is it going, you need to visit the museum. Museums in Uganda are uh, Kenneth, uh, have been existing since 1908 and actually Uganda had the first museum in East Africa in 19 uh, in 1908 and then Kenya followed and Tanzania however we've had one national museum for a long time until recent when the Ministry of Tourism Wildlife and Antiquities developed other museums in Kabare and Soroti and for Soroti, that is why even we are you know, going to Soroti, because Soroti has a rich heritage, and we want it to be showcased to the world. And so that's why we, in tourism sector, we, we form products. We have a, a, a one of the largest components of the products that we need to sell to the country, to the public, and also to our tourists to come and enjoy our rich culture 
and heritage. All right. Um, you said that uh, um, 1908, that's when we had the first museum. Uh, it's quite so long. I, I wonder how many museums we have now and what exactly we can find there. Oh, yes. In 1908, uh, we started at Fort Lugard. With that time, it was a small museum. They were even calling it House of Fetishes because basically it was Baganda ethnographic objects that were there. Fort Lugard in yes. Old Kampala. Yes, Old Kampala. Mm. And then in 1934, it shifted to Makelele, that is um, a school of fine art, Margaret Trowell. And in 1954, that's when we went to our permanent home at the National Museum where we are in, in at Kira Road, Kitante. So what's at Fort Lugard now? At Fort Lugard, right now we mm. have uh, the Buganda, BHTB Buganda Heritage Board showcasing some of the Buganda heritage. And uh, But we have had, and that's why we also invited Barbara from CCFU to come to be with us this evening because apart from the national or the government museums that we are currently, three of them that we are having in the country, th we have had also community, we have community museums and we want to thank CCFU because they have done a great job <coughs> in having these uh, community museums developed. And we also have private museums. All right. We have institutional museums. All right. And so right now, I cannot count the number of museums we have in Uganda because private are many, uh, community are many, and now government we have in Kabare at Kia Kampara and Soroti. Right now, we are constructing in Karamoja. And so we are going to construct uh, museums and national museums in all regions because we have noticed that the current curriculum, the education curriculum has a component that require all learners to go and visit the museums from primary, secondary and tertiary. And so with that, to reduce on the distance, also to look at regional balancing. That's why the ministry in its strategic plan, they plan, and even in national development plan, we plan to have at least museums in all regions of Uganda. All right. Let me come to you, Barbara. Uh, as a civil society organization, many civil society in Uganda here will pick on different issues. You'll find them in health, uh, education, governance, uh, human rights, such issues. But you, you, you chose to focus mainly on issues to do with culture. Now, uh, you're being talked about uh, in regard to m museums, well, what is uh, your interest in museums and uh, what have you been able to do? Maybe you can also help us to understand the significance of these museums okay. in Uganda. Thank you very much, Kenneth. I would like, first of all, to appreciate uh, this opportunity by the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities to invite us as their partners to <coughs> co host mm. um, this show. As an organization, one of the things that drove the founding members into starting the organization was the glaring gap in promoting cultural heritage by us, the civil, the civil society people, but also government itself cannot do everything. It needs to be reinforced. It needs to be supported. Mm. And given the negative attitude that we have in Uganda about culture, the founding members felt it imperative to actually support <coughs> rerouting us and supporting the admiration and the consumption of our cultural heritage as a backbone to our economic development. We very well know that without development being hinged on the context of a nation, it remains a bit loose. It easily fades. The sustainability is not there. So as the Cross-Cultural Foundation of Uganda, one of the spaces that would support cultural heritage learning are the, are the museums. And we very well know that government and its capacity is also still limited because of the different uh, funding competitions that have to be done to different sectors. So what is it that we also as Ugandans can do to showcase, to support the learning 
this is when the cross cultural foundation of uganda came in to say can we work with individuals groups or communities that are willing mm. to set up museums to showcase their own heritage for purposes of expression for purposes of them uh, supporting their young ones to learn and this at the same time will help to link us to the future where we shall be we know that development does not happen in a vacuum it picks on what is existing innovates around it to come up with solutions that help us in the future that's why even museums become central places for innovation central places <coughs> for addressing contemporary challenges we are having lots of challenges with the climate change effects that mm. are happening mm. have you ever thought that if you walked into a museum it would be a bit easier for you to pick up an idea of what used to happen maybe in the past that you could actually innovate around it and contribute to initiatives that would mitigate climate change so currently we have around 27 community museums that we have supported across the country they are doing well but also us as an organization in order to set an example with the support of the european union we set up the first ever uganda railway museum which is in ginger it's the second of its kind in east africa but it is actually demonstrating a number of things how was our transport system in U in uganda like during those years we are talking about countries evolving the sgrs etc do you think they started from sgrs or there is somewhere where they started they are learning they are innovating we have jet trains we have those that you know after takeoff they fly in the air like airplanes it all starts from the core trains that we had mm. and we are having an exhibition uh, with the support and partnership of the ministry that is taking place at the uganda national curriculum uh, center the national Muse, uh, the national theater mm. that mm -hmm. actually showcases some of these things so we implore people to go there see learn pick interest in your own culture so that you can work with it All right. to promote mm -hmm. development. You, you're talking about 27 community museums. I, I just want to know uh, where they are, and you may not exhaust all of them, but what are some of the things that we would find in, in, in these museums? What is the um, criteria of setting them up? What exactly do you take into account in order to set up a museum in a certain place? What are you looking at? Thank you very much. The museums are spread across the country in different districts as long as we find people who are willing to actually set up the museums mm -hmm. in imbarara there is igongo that's a little bit famous uh well known by a number of ugandans what's there igongo cultural museum it showcases the ankole culture okay the practices around the cows <clears throat> the history of ankole we also have the eclipse that is just a little bit out of the museum but a lot of information about it, you would come and get it into in the museum. It talks about the history, the governance of Uganda, how the Bunyoro King, the Bunyoro King evaded and looted in Tanzania. And as he was moving back with loots, with people, slaves, etc., an eclipse happened. Don't say that he looted, he conquered. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we will use the words that are... Yeah. Maybe to add on us, usually community museums mm. are meant to represent a community. Mm. And so depending sometimes on what they call a community, but in most cases, if it is the community of Karamajongs, uh, so you will look at what is their heritage, and then that's what they will bring together to showcase to the public. All right. If you go to West Nile, mm. they have done the same. You look because they deal with the communities and they bring what they have as their heritage. So if I go to West Nile, there's a museum there that captures the history and the heritage of the people in the West Nile region. Yes, mm. you yes. will. Mm. All right. When you go to Toro, you will find their Kogere Foundation. Mm. Talks about that. Go to Mbale, you will also find Kakungu. a museum there. Mm. We are also setting up the Semei Kakunguru mm. Museum soon. 
probably by towards the end of this year it will also be open all right um, mr vivian liazi you are in charge of development of the tourism in in this country um let's look at the central role of museums in that particular area of tourism uh, most cases uh, when you uh, i want to look it i uh, look at it in two ways um on the local level but also from the perspective of uh, the international visitors who come here. Yeah. Well, mostly in Uganda, I, I don't know if people go to museums, Ugandans. Ugandans? I, I, I don't know. Um, but let's hear your perspective. Of what, we, of what importance are museums to uh, the sector that you're developing? Thank you so much, Kenneth. Um, uh, to our viewers, when we talk about tourism, uh, there are quite a number of products uh, that uh, we, we, we actually sell as a country. Uh, many uh, of the products that we've been selling were nature linked. Uh, so we, we've been mainly known as a safari destination. Uh, we've been known as a destination for gorillas and, uh, and so on and so forth, which is a natural endowment and we are proud about that. But uh, the argument has always been that Uganda is much more than, uh, than safari, is much more than uh, gorillas. It is currently skewed towards uh, wildlife uh, tourism development, but there is a lot more especially to offer in uh, as far as culture is concerned. And uh, one of the best ways to display culture is through the museums. Uh, the museums, as uh, Jackie has uh, elaborated and Barbara, are repositories of uh, our history, of our artifacts, and, uh, and so on and so forth. They are important for educational purposes, so the young people are able to go and learn their history, their past, and the relevance and the interconnection they have with, uh, with the past generations. The international community is also very much interested in understanding a community. Normally when you go and visit a particular destination, you want to immerse yourself uh, with that community, understand it, what do they eat, what makes them laugh, where do they come from? What is their history? And in many cases, it's a violent history that we, we, we really talk about, which are the wars uh, they did fight, which are the bad episodes they went through, slave trade, and so on and so forth. The museums play an extremely important role in capturing and communicating uh, that history. Uh, Jackie has uh, been telling you about the expansion program that is going on. For a long time, much of the museum uh, product has been at Kitante Road. Uh, when you talk of going to the museum, go to Kitante Road. Mm. Uh, now they are, there is a wide menu, not only by government effort, but also by the civil society and the private sector. So it is expanding all over the country and is adding greatly to the menu, not only for those who have primarily come for the museums, but also as an add-on that those who come to experience wildlife can now also have an extra experience uh, of culture, both in the tangible and also intangible aspects. So yes, uh, museums are extremely important and growing uh, in numbers. Right. Let's look at how much you're investing in actually growing these uh, mm. uh, museums. But because it seems they actually bring in some good money, mm. but are you taking back money to actually develop some of these museums? Definitely, yes. We've, done, we've talked about expansion. Mm -hmm. We've talked about expansion. Like I said, we are, uh, we are at the museum at uh, Kitante Road, but now we're talking about the Soroti Museum. We are talking about the Kabali Museum. We are now talking about the uh, mm -hmm. museum in, K in Karamoja, in Moroto. Uh, and the expansion program is going on. Not only that, we are also supporting the community museums. Mm -hmm. We are supporting the private sector in setting up uh, these museums and also the cultural institutions. Mm -hmm. We did talk about the Buganda uh, Museum that is being set up and several other uh, cultural institutions that are setting up. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about two issues to do with the artifacts. You know, um, it's interesting. There's a, a debate going on on the international uh, level. Uh, some countries are pushing for return of some of their artifacts which were stolen or which were taken. They Use the word stolen. There were different <laughs> terminologies that come into play. I, right. I want to understand if Uganda has any 
uh, that are outside there that we, that would interest so many people if they were taken by the Europeans they would be interested to come back and to come here and uh, look at them but even we Ugandans would yes. be interested in going to the museum to see that kind of item to understand what exactly uh, drove the Europeans to take that particular item from here. Do we have any? Are Most certainly, any? yes. I will refer that to Jackie. All right, Jackie. Uh, Let's hear from Jackie. Yes. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yes. Kenneth, we, of course, in 1914, uh, 1910, mm. there are many artifacts that left. Some of them are ethnographical, others are archaeological, others are paleontological, and some of them came from Bunyoro Kitara, others came from Toro, but others came from Buganda. You are aware that in 1962, 1961, we returned the 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 Kibuka from uh, from Europe. Mm. The Kibuka was returned, and it is now permanently showcased at the museum. What is Chibuka? If you Chib remember, Chibuka Omumbare okay. is uh, the famous story that you know. The famous fighter. Uh, yes, fighter who used to fight from the clouds. From the clouds. And he would beat the Banyoro, and then until when he married the Munyoro, and the, you know, and they show, they go to see the tricks, and then they it's had like to the kill. Samson and Delilah. Yes, Samson yes, and yes. <laughs> so they had to kill him from his clouds. Mm. But uh, and you know the famous tree, of course. Mm. But I want to say that uh, as that, that famous tree was actually cut down, if I, I if I yes, remember. By Yunra, uh, have, have yes, by We had uh, something about it preserved, but. It, I, I found it very unusual that uh, yes, that they are going to pre they are preserving like its uh, relics. But wa was it necessary really to actually cut it down? I'm just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> there are those being cut. There are and those falling by themselves. Yes, you should have been, should have been at the forefront of actually saying, "Don't, don't touch that tree." Yes, mm. I unfortunately that time the law hadn't been passed, but now we have the Museums and Monuments Act. Mm. 2023 so now in case of anything like that automatically the public will come to us for assistance but regarding the international uh, re returning of the or institution of uh, of, of artifacts. heritage mm. uh, artifacts we are returning 36 artifacts from Cambridge 36 yes mm. in June mm. Uh, we expect them to arrive around 4th June. 4th June? Yes, because they are already on a ship. And we worked um, with our partners, of course, from University of um, Michigan University. Mm. And we've worked with Cambridge to make sure that they return. We have 2,008 artifacts soon returning from Kenya. We negotiated those ones are Karamajong artifacts, which were taken in 1960s. But that is the time, of course, when Idi Amin uh, asked or ordered the Karamajong to, you know, to leave their culture and, you know, uh, you know the, the the slogan that Uganda will not wait for Karamajongs to, to develop. develop. Mm. So at that time, about 360 people were killed, and there is a mass grave. Those who had refused to hand over. Where is that mass grave? It is in in a park mm. district, and so those who had refused to hand over to you know to to refuse their culture, those were killed. To but denounce their to culture. To denounce their culture. Mm. Yeah, those were killed. But those who 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 felt that at least something must be kept, that is, they sold to a white who was an agriculturist, and he was working with agriculture. He posted in Karamoja, he's called Led Wilson, and so he picked many artifacts bought some of them, others he got for free. He took them to UK. Then later he returned to Kenya. He has he lived with them in Kitare and so finally he passed on and so we negotiated with the family because the people were trying to buy them, have them as their souvenirs in their homes. So when we got to know about that last year we negotiated 
and we managed to have them. Mm. So we deposited them at the National Museums of Kenya. When we are ready to receive them, that's when we shall have that permission now for them to leave the country. Because we have now, we, you, I don't know if you're aware of the illicit trafficking uh, international convention. Mm. And so to avoid that, you know, because these these artifacts involve like elephant hair, you know, there are different things that are there. Mm. They are precious. You cannot easily see them now in Karamoja. And so we requested the National Museums of Kenya to keep them for us. And Until that's you're ready. one mm. that's why right now we in the the museum we are constructing in Moroto we are dedicating one full gallery to those artifacts. All right. And, and the yes. 36 that are coming back from uh, from, from Cambridge, in, you yes, said, well, yes. what do we have there significantly? Most of them are Buganda mm. artifacts. I can't have everything off the, head, the, but the, I retro- the, There's a famous head that they talk about. Um, the the Nyoro King's the, crown. The Nyoro King's no, crown. No, that one is in Pit Rivers. Mm. The, the, that one is in Pit Rivers, is in a different place. Pit Rivers where? In the in UK. In the UK. Yes. Mm. And that one, of course, we have also been, of course, engaging the director at Pit Rivers. You see, even what we are returning, there is what in museums we call accessioning. When you record, uh, you would say an archive, when you register an artifact in a museum, we call it, that registration is uh, it's accessioning. And so when, you, when it comes out, you deaccession. And so for the UK law, they rarely, they don't have a clause on deaccession. And so that's why they, they return, but they give us a permanent loan or a long-term loan until when their laws are changed. All right. Spectrum on Radio 1. Be Spectrum on Radio 1. Let's go for a break. <laughs> when we return, we will hear from uh, Barbara. Barbara is also one of those people who has traveled in the West. And um, earlier before we came on air, she was actually telling me her experience uh, when she came across several artifacts from Africa which are hanging out there. I'm just wondering whether they are being returned with some money because I'm quite sure these countries have made a killing out of the exhibitions they've been making. Stay tuned, Radio 1 FM 90. We'll continue after this break. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. As a Spectrum Extra on Radio 1 FM 90, our topic of discussion today, the importance of museums for our heritage and the tourism sector. We are speaking to, I'm speaking to Mr. Vivian Liazi, the Acting Commissioner, Tourism Development, Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities. Ms. Barbara Babuetera Mutambi, the Executive Director, Cross-Cultural Foundation of Uganda. Ms. Jacqueline Nirachiza Besige, the Acting Commissioner, Museum and Monuments. Before we went to a break, we understood the importance of museums in Uganda, not only uh, for education purposes, but also for tourism and even for our national heritage. Now we are looking at a, a situation where the government of Uganda is actually expanding and constructing museums together with partners such as uh, the Cal- Cross-Cultural Foundation of Uganda. And one of the things we are looking at is the items that will be in those uh, museums. And uh, before we went for a break, we were discussing the fact that some of our artifacts are out there in other countries. And uh, indeed, um, Miss Jacqueline did confirm that uh, there are a number that are going to be brought back, including 36 that are in Cambridge, uh, which will be brought here, and others which are in Kenya, w- which will be specifically taken to a museum in uh, Karamoja sub-region. Now, let's hear from Barbara. Uh, your, your experience on this issue of um, uh, artifacts that are outside there and uh, what we really need to do as a country to uh, bring them back. After that, we'll go into the commemoration to look at the themes and uh, what exactly will be happening in Soroti City on uh, that day. Uh, thank you very much. I think the ministry is already on the right track mm. uh, doing the negotiations for the return of these artifacts. Why do we have to negotiate in your... In, 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 why do we have to negotiate? Because these were our things. They were there are number taken of, here. There are a number of reasons. Actually, it has been a very hot debate mm. at the international scene. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, if, if you find a thief with your <laughs> your item, do you negotiate? But the, one of the of the reasons they are advancing mm. is that as Africa, we have not yet learned to treasure these artifacts, and they are much safer in the spaces of the Europeans where they have exhibited uh, capacity and have had these artifacts for hundreds of years. And you seem to so agree. So they, th they say they are safer. Mm. But we as the owners of the artifacts, we are saying how much safer would they then be with us, the owners of them who have significance in them? Because every artifact has a story around it. So we are having the stories, the intangible heritage of it here. While the actual artifact is in the European countries, where are the stories that they have to narrate? So I think it is much more beneficial when these artifacts are with us, the story to be told by us. But one of the key issues that they are actually not putting out there is economic. How much do they earn from these museums? Jackie has just told you that when they put up special exhibitions, mm. An entrance ticket can go for around 40 euros. I'll just give an example of one of the museums that has most of the Central African uh, artifacts, including some from East Africa, but most of them were from the Congo ETC. It's called the Royal Museum of Central Africa. That museum, an entry ticket if you want to visit, is approximately 13 euros. And they say, Annually, and which I think is an under-declaration, they have around 180,000 visitors. Do the mathematics. Mm. How <coughs> much is that in Ugandan shillings annually? That's they, in which country? That's in Belgium. Okay. So they make a lot of money, approximately 9 billion shillings, mm. and as get collections. But then when you go there, there are a number of things that people want to conduct research about. And that's extra money that you pay for the research work. This museum employs around 90 PhD professors. They guide people, they work with them, produce new knowledge and information. They have a number of, you, she's talked about uh, anthropological, ethnographic, paleontology, and <laughs> zoology, things like that. Mm. If you want to learn about ancient <coughs> African tree species, they have more than 56,000 species from the Central African spaces. Mm. So how much will they charge you to go to learn about those things? They are really earning a lot of money that when they pick some of it to give us as aid, they are actually utilizing our own resources to make money out of them, sometimes where they pick to return to us. Mm. So I think it's really important that these artifacts be taken where they belong because that's where the heritage is, that's where the stories are. Mm -hmm. Spectrum already won FM90. Keep your comments coming on our WhatsApp line, which is 0703090090. Tell us um, what do we need to do as a country to actually promote our museums, uh, which are very critical for our heritage and tourism. You hear um, in the West, uh, billions of dollars are actually being collected out of museums, and some of those items that are being showcased in those museums actually belong to uh, countries like Uganda. But on, on the issue of keeping them safe, um, somehow they could be right, because I've, I've seen in some situations where certain artifacts are actually supposed to be keeping, kept in a certain room temperature mm. so that they do not get uh, spoiled. And are, mm. are we mm. constructing our museums using those benchmarks? Or are we do, still doing it the old way? No. Are we actually ready to preserve these things? Should they be handed back to us, uh, Jacqueline? Yes. Mm. Uh, of course, that's why we are, for example, at the National Museum, mm. we are renovating. We are going to start rehabilitation or renovation of the museum in June. And we are going to put in those strong rooms where we can keep like skins, things that, you know, needs to be preserved in a certain temperature. And of recent, we are also uh, starting to have the, they are called hygrometers, you know, measuring temperature of the showcases so that we are sure that these artifacts do not come and die here. It is true in Europe, one of the reasons why they usually have those mixed feelings 
is that they have been in a certain condition. And so, like, any, even if it is a growth, the, it has been in a certain condition kept, and then you bring it to this template weather of ours, it is easy to lose it. But that's why what we are doing is t as we renovate, we are going to take special care of some of those objects. And right. that actually uh, is an indicator for the need for the government of Uganda to allocate more resources to these ministries, to the museums, so that they are able to take care of these artifacts and generate for the country that income. Viviana Lady Rosfia has actually said they now have a lot of money to actually undertake most of these projects. I don't know whether that's true. <laughs> Did we say so? <laughs> you said so. You said you are expanding. Yes, you, you, are. You, you, are, you have money now at your disposal to do some of these things. That's quite right. We are we're improving. You mm. know, we need much more, but we are in a better state than we were before. Mm. Definitely. Your language is changing. I, I don't know why. <laughs> no, but what he's saying is mm. right. Mm. Mm. If I tell you in, for example, during the NDP2, mm. what we had to do the developments and conservation was less than one billion. Mm. But in NDP3, at least I would comfortably say that we have more than, I would say, seven billion for conservation and development. Development alone, we are having a budget of about 8.5 per mm per year. Mm. Of course we need more if we are to develop museums in all the regions in Uganda. We need more but at least we are much better than, we than were where we were. So we are on a steady progress. So who is taking us to Soroti? Is it Vivian or Jacqueline? It is Jacqueline. What is going to happen, yeah. to, going to happen to in Soroti on mm. Saturday? Actually Soroti does not only begin on Saturday, it mm. begins on Thursday. Okay. We have a quiz so we have invited schools from the eastern region because when we talk about eastern we are talking about uh from Bare to you know to karamoja and so we have invited all schools from those areas from those districts to come and discuss you know they have quizzes they are going to ha to, to learn more about cultural heritage and so that will happen on Thursday and Friday. And then after that, on Friday, a team that will come from Kampala will move and visit Nyero Rock paintings. Then after that, we shall have a cultural evening where we are going to, exp to, to, to experience or you know enjoy the, the culture of the people from Eastern Uganda and mainly the artisans. And so, and Karamajongs, of course, they are more of related. Mm. And so that evening we shall get more of the dances and we shall have storytellings, get to know what happened some years back, how they, you know, mentored their children. And so we have a lot in stock. And so on, on Saturday, that is 18th, that's when we shall have the main celebrations. And of course, we shall do a walk, uh, a march past. Of course, all that we are creating awareness mm -hmm. and um, on the conservation of cultural heritage resources. And then after our, the vice president, her excellency, the vice president of the Republic of Uganda, major, retired major Jessica Arupo, will be the chief guest and we hope to really see a lot and enjoy. All right. We have some of comments actually coming in from uh, the listeners, or one of the comments is from Henry, who says, why is the museum always closed on weekends yet our children want to visit? Uh, that's a question there from uh, that listener. Another listener what says, I want to put up an environmental museum where I grow indigenous fruit trees and forest tree species. Kindly guide me through the process of creating, creating a museum in Uganda. Then we have a comment from Bob, who is listening in from Kampala, he says, is it right and fitting to name the upcoming museum in Bugisu after Samei Ruakirenzi Kakunguru, who was a colonial collaborator? Um, do, don't we have alternatives 
are the locals agreeable? Well, those are some sentiments there <laughs> actually being expressed. Let, let's very quickly respond to some of those comments and then uh, take on uh, the others. We have three comments. Why is the museums always closed on the weekends? I think they're talking about the National Museum here. Says so the children want to visit it. Someone wants to know how they can set up a museum. They specifically want to do with the environment. They want to, to grow indigenous fruit trees and uh, forest trees, species in those particular uh, areas. And this person is just saying, maybe you should think twice about the name of Kakunguru in Bugisu sub-region, given the colonial perspective. Okay, um, mm. maybe I will start with weekends. Yes, uh, we do not close. Mm. I will ask that person to check on our website because weekends, Saturday and Sunday, and public holidays, we open from 10 to 5. And so maybe if that person visited at before 10, maybe they were still doing other uh, cleaning and the rest, but strictly from 10 to 5, we are open. Other days we are open from 9 to 6. And we are planning to have special, special occasions where people can pay to visit at night. That is after the renovations. If you want to have your wedding at the museum and you want it open at night for your guests to see, you pay a special fee and then we open for you. Those or even as if some delegates wants to come and see at night when there's no traffic jam, then those ones pay a special fee and then they come. So that one is also in the process. Environmental museum, I think that person, not I think the person should just come and register with the museum. The current law is very clear. Before you set up a museum, you come and register. And then we discuss, we guide, because we are there to guide. And then we see how we can help that person develop the passion. Yeah, because... Where can they find you? The National Museum is at Kira Road, Prot 5, uh, in Kamota. That is about five kilometers from the city. That's center. where they're supposed to come? Yes. That's where your office is based? Office yes, is that's where the office is. Mm. Yes, then I will say on Bugisu... I believe Kakungulu is not a Bugisu museum. It is actually, you see, this is a historical building that is being restored. And so you put an inter it becomes an interpretation center that is talking about Kakungulu and what he did. Yes, even when we are trying to decolonize, decolonize our histories, mm we cannot do away with some of our histories. And we <coughs> learn from our past. If we had, in the past, we had mistakes, we learn from those mistakes to shape the future, you know, to, to see what we can do in the present to shape the future. And so the Kakungulu is a historical building that is being restored and information that we really need for our learners will be displayed as an interpretation center. But for Bugisu as a region, there is much to be showcased. And so a Bugisu museum, we are still working with the cultural institution to come up with something that will be representative of the whole of Bugisu. All right. There is actually a Let me hear from museum. you. Let me hear from yeah, you, Barbara. Yes. Uh, the, the, these sentiments. But I've also people. I had also people talking about dark tourism or something like that. There, there was a proposal by one particular group to actually set up a museum or something in memory of the late Idi Amin, and uh, mm -hmm. it, it was kicked away. So some of these things invoke certain memories. How, how do we balance those realities, our history and uh, culture? but also continue to, to set up of some of these historical issues, things. Thank you very much, mm. uh, Anderson. One thing that we must be, uh, we must acknowledge is that museums are centers of learning. And you will not cover up what happened in the past simply because you don't want to listen to it. But how do you learn from what happened to shape the future? As Jackie has already put and, it, and someone has actually put in a, uh, someone has actually put in a, a, a comment. He's called Jimmy. He says museums play a critical role in consolidating and sustaining peace, given our history marked with episodes of conflicts. How much are we doing to develop and promote this dark and traumatic history? 
and then how exactly how do we get to live peacefully to coexist where knowing what happened in the past mm. how do we avoid to get back to the same situation that information you would learn from the museum and it would help us to avoid repeating the same mistakes but let me share also some other examples mm. let's not only look at us here in uganda look at the museum i've talked about the royal museum of central africa around 260 something congolese were actually taken as slaves and they were part of the zoo sector of what africa was like <laughs> represented yes the day. and for the young belgians to the first time they come into contact with learning about the african continent that is where they would go that's where they would learn from it was degrading turning human beings into a zoo but should we do away with that how do we learn from that how do we hold each other as countries accountable to respecting our international conventions there are conventions on uganda human rights uh, the uganda human rights convention there are conventions on culture political economic rights how do we work with them and hold each other accountable learn from the past rectify what happened in the past we can't do away with what it, what happened but how do we then forge a better relationship going forward maybe mm. also i um yes, vivian will talk about mm -hmm. our master plan but mm. the master plan uh which is soon ending in 2024 mm. for tourism clearly indicated that ministry of tourism should look into dark tourism and in 2019 we showcased the Idi Amini heritage and at the National Museum and we had actually the son and you know even we had the daughter of Jananul Wom come to speak we've had those dialogues usually during independence in 2022 we had the HE the president of the Republic of Uganda with us when we are still talking about you know this dark heritage and how to move to the future but i want to say that we as minister of tourism as government of uganda we are also working on royal triangle and we are going to showcase you know what happened there you know royal triangle we have the graves and you know talking about that we have developed Balonio Memorial Site in northern Uganda and we are showcasing that how, you know, the LRA, you know, the brutal killings that happened in northern Uganda. We are planning to nominate the memorial sites on the World Heritage, uh, UNESCO World Heritage List mm. because <clears throat> we want the world to know, you know, like not only to know because there is a lot that you learn from uh, these memorial sites about, you know, what happened, how it started. You know, people will tell you that, you know, like Konyi, it's the uncle who was telling him that he needed to wipe away, you know, to cleanse by shedding blood. He was cleansing. So all that, we have the stories, we have recorded, and we are starting slowly. As we told you, we have the funds, but they are not enough. So when we get more funds, then we shall be bringing out a lot because we have a lot in stock. All right, let's hear from Vivian on the, on the issue of uh, the strategic plan that is, she's talking about and um, Indeed, the issue of the dark tourism. Yeah, we, mm. we, we talk of dark tourism. Incidentally, when you're talking <coughs> about uh, history, much of the outstanding history is actually dark mm. uh, history. It is uh, a commemoration of of the worst that happened uh, during those times. And uh, some of the most successful museums or memorial sites that are uh, all over the world are actually a representation or a depiction of uh, the dark history. You've uh, noted the uh, extermination camps mm. in Poland and in, uh, in Germany. Hiroshima. Uh, Hiroshima is another outstanding example. Here in Rwanda, uh, you, you have that museum. And indeed, even when you go to Namgongo, it's uh, a depiction of a martyrdom that happened mm. during that time. So really, uh, to remind people that this is what happened and uh, we have lessons to draw from it, 
and we should not repeat this again. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, within our plan, it is uh, one of those uh, elements that we would like to capture, and uh, Jackie has uh, spoken well on the <coughs> Baronio, on the Ruero sites. Mm. Uh, definitely we're doing a lot more on the Namugongo sites. Uh, we are doing something in Chibwetere. Uh, you talk about Namugongo, and somebody here asked, how about the anticipated return of the Uganda Matters relics? Somebody asking here, Geoffrey uh, is asking, mm. you have a hand in it. Uh, are we likely to keep them? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that's, that's, that's more in the rims of the church. No go area. <laughs> <laughs> it's more in the rims of the church, but mm. I think uh, it is something that uh, can be discussed and, uh, and looked at uh, more. And the good thing is that Ugandans are getting to appreciate the whole concept of museums. Mm. Uh, some time back, you talk about museums, people would think about fetishes, old things, etc. Mm. But it is now knowledge that you can even start up, as you've had an environmental yes. museum. Mm. You can start up a religious museum mm. that would even demonstrate spirituality mm. from the time we were worshipping mm. in the African setting mm. to what it is today. Mm. You could find other museums related to food, museums that are purely related the thematic, to thematic. Their thematic. Yeah. Uganda has one on currency. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. get mm. to know. All right, we currency. should be thinking about Maybe, setting up uh, a museum on media. I just True. want to Why tell is, you uh, the technology that has evolved. We mm. currently have uh, we have the Uganda printing printery, the UPPC. They mm. are starting a museum. Of course, we have Parliament talking about history. We have URA talking about taxes. We have Bank of Uganda. So they are institutional museums that are coming in. Of course, they come with themes. The and museum. even we shall be interesting private sector like this environmentalist talking about that other thematic area, which is also very important. All right. Closing remarks in a few seconds. I'll begin with you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, um, moderator. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, I'd like to wish all Ugandans a happy museum day, mm. but let us use it as a point of reflection to see how much we can ourselves contribute towards the development of our own nation. Let us stop shunning our own culture and gratifying what is not ours, but rather see how do we work with what we have to contribute to our own development. Jacqueline? Thank you very much for the evening. Um, I'll close by inviting the public to join the Ministry of Tourism and Government to celebrate this International Museum Day. International Museum Day in Soroti, as I mentioned, will start on Thursday, and we would like, you know, to move with all Ugandans mm. and see the rich heritage in the eastern region. There is a lot in stock, and so we invite all of them and also not forgetting the National Museum. All right. The National Museum is always open. Let them come and visit, the, see their heritage. It is theirs. Great. All right, Vivian. From a tourism perspective, we mm. encourage all Ugandans to take interest in their country, visit their country, invest in their country, and love their country. Thank all you. right. With that, we come to the end of Spectrum. Let me thank you, my dear guests, for actually making time to come and educate Ugandans more about their heritage and the role museums can actually play in promoting that heritage, but also the tourism sector. Let me also thank you, dear listeners, who contributed to this discussion. Tomorrow, same time, another topic. Up next, we have the news in English with Ms. Josephine Dagano. Uh, thereafter, we'll have the Soul Train with BB Junior. From me and the guests in studio, it's a good night. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90.